My dearly beloved in Christ, the theme for today's gospel in particular, particular is that of humility and the importance of acknowledging that all the good that we have comes from Almighty God. In the epistle, St. Paul says, no one can say Jesus is Lord except in the Holy Ghost, meaning that you could not say an ejaculation meritoriously unless God gives you the grace to do so. So we are receiving graces continuously. And of course, we owe gratitude to Almighty God for our natural life, our physical life. We could not breathe. Our heart would stop beating were it not for Almighty God sustaining us. So we could say that everything we have, everything except sin, everything is from Almighty God. And so true humility means that we acknowledge the source. But look at this proud Pharisee in the gospel. He stood in the front of the temple and he said, O oh God, I thank you that I am not like other men, like that publican in the back. I fast, I tithe, I do this, I do that, I fulfill all the law. And he was so proud and so conceited in the good that he did. He didn't acknowledge that it was by the grace of God that he was able to do that. And our Lord concludes this parable of the Pharisee and the publican in the temple by saying, everyone who exalts himself shall be humbled, and he who humbles himself shall be exalted. So this goes to show how much God detests pride and how much he is attracted to the humble. God gives his grace to the humble. He rejects the proud. Our Lady in her Magnificat said, he has exalted the humble. He has put down the mighty from their seat and hath exalted the humble. God detests pride. And we must constantly seek through examination of conscience to see where we are giving into pride and to overcome it and to practice humility. We could even say that the proud are repulsive to Almighty God. Think of the effect that a stench, a bad odor would have on you, where you would flee that place where there is this repulsive odor. So the proud are like a putrid odor to God. He detests pride more than we could imagine. And of course, the main example of pride is the prince of the angels, Lucifer, who was created by God so beautifully, endowed with so many gifts, but Lucifer gave in to pride, and he wanted to be like God. He wanted to be equal to God. And he said, I will not serve in his pride. And he was cast out of heaven into hell along with the other bad angels who followed his example. And so we see how God detests pride because those fallen angels are in hell for all eternity because they wanted to exalt themselves to be equal to God. There are other examples in the Old Testament. One of them is that of King David who was a shepherd boy but was raised up by Almighty God to be even the king of his chosen people. And you remember when David killed the giant Goliath and the army was making their way back into Jerusalem, the women, it says, came out of the towns and the villages and they sang the praises of Saul's army. And they said, Saul has killed his thousands and David his ten thousands. And it says in scripture that this saying, that Saul was angry at this saying, this was not pleasing to him. He envied the homage that was given to David, who had slain the giant. And from that point on, Saul disliked David. And this dislike came to such a point that it developed into a hatred. And Saul even sought to kill David. But God was with David and protected him. 
So we see Saul sinning by pride because it bothered him that David was honored and he should have given thanks to God that the people had been spared, that the Philistines had been conquered through the bravery of King David, of young David, who later became king. But instead of giving thanks to God and himself honoring David, he was bothered in his pride by the lack of homage given to him, that which was given to David. So we see throughout Scripture, really, examples of pride and humility. And our Lord, speaking about the Pharisees, says, don't be like them. When they want to pray, they stand on a street corner so that everyone can see them. When they fast, they disfigure their faces so that people would say, oh, look how holy he is. He's fasting. And he said, they've already received their reward from the esteem of men. They don't have any reward in eternity. So we must be on our guard against pride. It is a very subtle evil that sometimes the proud person doesn't even recognize that he is motivated by pride in what he does. Perhaps the best example of pride and also humility is in a story in the Old Testament in the book of Esther. And this is a story about a woman named Esther And the other characters, the main characters in the story, are her uncle Mordecai, who adopted Esther because her parents had both died. She was orphaned. She was raised by her uncle, who is a devout, God-fearing Jew. And then the king of the Persians at that time, who is named Ahasuerus, and his chief of staff, or his prime minister, an evil man named Ammon. And as the story goes, this took place historians tell us, about the year 485 B.C. Now, to back up what had happened was in around 588 B.C., Nebuchadnezzar, with his army, the Babylonians, attacked Jerusalem and destroyed the temple and carried away a large number of the people, all of those who were well enough to travel to Babylon and made them slaves in Babylon. And the Jewish people were there in captivity for 70 years. And after 70 years, the Babylonians were conquered by the Persians. And the Persian king allowed those Jews who wanted to do so to return to Jerusalem and rebuild their temple. Many of them did, but many more did not want to go back to Jerusalem because they were born and raised in the east, They never had been to Jerusalem. They no longer spoke the language, the Hebrew language. And so many of them just remained in Babylon, which was now the kingdom of Persia. And one of them, again, was this Mordecai. Now, the king, Ahasuerus, wanted to find the most beautiful woman he could to be his queen. And so he sent his servants out to gather a number of virgins that he would choose one of them for his queen. Well, one of them that was called to the king's palace was Esther. Now, she was very beautiful, but she was even more so, she was virtuous. And the king was enthralled by her beauty and her virtue, and he made her the queen. But Mordecai, her uncle, had told her, don't tell the king your family. Don't tell him that you are a Hebrew. And so here she was, queen, and as time went on, Ammon was raised to the point of being the king's right-hand man, had a great deal of authority, and so people honored him. And when Ammon went to the king's palace every day and entered the gate, there were people who stood around the gate, among whom was Mordecai, because Mordecai was there to hear news of his niece, Esther. He was worried about her. And every day as Ammon went in to work, entered the gate, all these people would bow down, except one, Mordecai. Mordecai would not give Ammon, whom he knew to be a wicked man, he would not give him this homage. And that just bothered Ammon to no end. He was so proud, it really annoyed him that Mordecai didn't honor him. In fact, he was so angry, he prevailed upon the king to issue an edict that all the Jews were to be killed on a certain day of a certain month. 
Now this, this happened in the first month of the year that this edict went out from the king. The king said, Amon said to the king, well, there's this group of people in your kingdom and they're, they're trying to destroy, they're, they want to rise up against you and told him all these lies. So Asuerus said to Amon, go ahead and do what you think is best. And Amon issued this edict that on the certain day in the 12th month of the year, all the Jews were to be killed. Now, that was a number of months off, but Mordecai sent a message to Esther, said, you need to do something to God put you in this position as queen so that you could intercede for your people. And she was terrified of the king. She, going into the king, who is this powerful man, and revealing to him her true lineage and asking for mercy for her people, well, she prayed and fasted for three days. And then she went into the king and said, I would like you to come to a banquet that I will have for you, and I'd like Amon to be there. And Amon was very excited at this news that he had been invited by the queen to this banquet. And he went home that evening, and he was telling his wife how the king had honored him and how even the queen chose no one else besides the king, no one else but him to attend this banquet and how happy he was, but he said, but there's one thing that I cannot stand. And that is that there is this Jew, Mordecai, who will not bow down to me when I enter the palace. And his wife said to him, well, why don't you build a gibbet here on your property to hang Mordecai? And so that's what Amon did. Now, that night, the king couldn't sleep. And he asked his courtiers to read the history of the kingdom to him because he couldn't sleep. Well, one of the stories they read was of Mordecai who had revealed a plot to assassinate the king sometime before. And the two men who planned to assassinate the king, it was found out, and they were executed. And when this was read to the king, he said, to the courtiers that were reading the history, he said, was anything done to reward this man, Mordecai, for what he did in saving my life? And they said, no, nothing was done. So the next morning, as soon as Amon entered the presence of the king, he said, Amon, tell me, how should he be honored whom the king desires to honor? And of course, in the king's mind, he's thinking of Mordecai. He wants to honor Mordecai to reward him for what he had done. Well, Amon is so filled with pride, he thinks to himself, well, who else could the king be referring to but me? So he says, well, he whom the king wishes to honor should be set on the king's own beast of burden and should be led through the streets by one of the principal courtiers of the king, one of the chief princes of the kingdom, and he should announce to everyone to bow down before him whom the king wishes to honor. And even the king's royal robe should be placed on this man and so forth. And the king listens, listens, he says, good. Now, I want you to go do that for Mordecai, what you have just said. And don't you dare omit one detail of this honor for Mordecai. And you can imagine how Amon was shocked and humiliated by having to lead on a donkey through the city, his enemy, Mordecai, and proclaim, thus, is he to be honored whom the king wishes to honor? So he did it. And then that evening came the banquet. And finally the king says, tell me, Esther, what is your request? If it be half of my kingdom, I will give it to you. He loved Esther so much. And she said, my, me and my people have a great enemy who wishes to destroy us. And she revealed that she was of the Jewish race. And the king said, who is this enemy? And she said, it is Amon. Now, there's a couple interesting things about the story. One of them is the king said to Esther, that law is not for you. It's for everyone else. And so Esther is a type of Our Lady because original sin was for everyone else, not for her. Our Lady is ex was exempt from original sin. So in that, Esther was a type of Our Lady. But the king was furious and he was so angry, he got up and walked in his garden. And when he got up to walk, Esther, uh, uh, Amon went over to the couch 
on which Esther was lying, because the way they would eat in the East in those days, they would kind of recline on couches. And he sat down next to her on the couch, begging her to intercede for him, because he realized the king was very angry at him. And when the king came in, he saw Ammon sitting right next to his wife on her couch. And he said, not only have you deceived me, wanting to destroy this people who have done nothing to offend me, in fact, one of them saved my life, that Mordecai, but now you're even trying to dishonor my queen. And so he had Ammon executed by hanging him on the same gibbet that he had built for Mordecai. It's an amazing story, the, the turning of the tables, but it just shows us the truth of what we read in today's gospel, that God exalts the humble. He despises the proud. Everyone who humbles himself shall be exalted, and he who exalts himself shall be humbled. Let us cultivate this beautiful virtue of humility, because without humility, all of our other virtues are without merit, without reward. If we do even what is good out of pride, like the Pharisees, we shall have no reward in eternity. Let us cultivate humility, realizing all that we have is from the good God, and to him be all honor given. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.